Hi friends! Welcome back for story time. This is our last week and we still have a good chunk of our book to finish up. So there will actually be two story times this week. Um, so one will be today on Tuesday, our regular day. And then I'm still kind of figuring out when the next one will be. Um, because when I initially recorded this, it was exceptionally long and I don't want to do that to you. Um, so with all that being said, and, um, without further ado, let's dive on right back in to The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I hope you guys are trying to say that because it is a very fun name to pronounce in a French accent. Um, yeah, just so fun. So fun. All right, we are on chapter 19. The little prince climbed a high mountain. The only mountains he had ever known were the three volcanoes which came up to his knee. And he used the extinct volcano as a footstool. A mountain as high as this one, he said to himself, I'll get a view of the whole planet and all the people on it. But he saw nothing but rocky peaks as sharp as needles. Hello, he said, just in case. Hello, 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 the echo answered. Who are you? asked the little prince. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? the echo answered. Let's be friends. I'm lonely, he said. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. I'm lonely, the echo answered. What a peculiar planet, he thought. It's all dry and sharp and hard. People here have no imagination. They repeat whatever you say to them. Where I live, I had a flower. She always spoke first. Chapter 20. But it so happened that the little prince, oh wait, hold on. Here he is on that mountain, echoing back at himself. Rocky edges. All right. Chapter 20. But it so happened that the little prince, having walked a long time through sand and rocks and snow, finally discovered a road. And all roads go to where there are people. Good morning, he said. It was a blossoming rose garden. Good morning, said the roses. The little prince gazed at them. All of them looked like his flower. Who are you? He asked, astounded. We're roses, the roses said. Ah, said the little prince. And he felt very unhappy. His flower had told him she was the only one of her kind in the whole universe. And here were 5,000 of them, all just alike in just one garden. She would be very annoyed, he said to himself. If she saw this, she would cough terribly and pretend to be dying to avoid being laughed at. And I'd have to pretend to be nursing her. Otherwise, she'd really let herself die in order to humiliate me. And then he said to himself, I thought I was rich because I had just one flower, and all I own is an ordinary rose. That and my three volcanoes, which come up to my knee, one of which may be permanently extinct. It doesn't make me much of a prince. And he lay down in the grass and wept. There's the roses, and there he is, weeping on the ground. Weeping or wept 
is just another word for crying really intensely. Sometimes you just gotta lay down, cry it out. Chapter 21. It was then that the fox appeared. Good morning, said the fox. Good morning, the little prince answered politely, though when he turned around, he saw nothing. I'm here, the voice said, under the apple tree. Who are you? the little prince asked. You're very pretty. I'm a fox, the fox said. Come and play with me, the little prince proposed. I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling so sad. I can't play with you, the fox said. I'm not tamed. Ah, excuse me, said the little prince. But upon, upon reflection, added, What does tamed mean? You're not from around here, the fox said. What are you looking for? Mm, I'm looking for people, said the little prince. What does tamed mean? People, said the fox, have guns and they hunt. It's quite troublesome. And they also raise chickens. That's the only interesting thing about them. Are you looking for chickens? No, said the little prince. I'm looking for friends. What does tamed mean? It's something that's been too often neglected. It means to create ties. To create ties? That's right, the fox said. For me, you're only a little boy, just like a hundred thousand other little boys. And I have no need of you. And you have no need of me either. For you, I'm only a fox, like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, We'll need each other. You'll be the only boy in the world for me. I'll be the only fox in the world for you. I'm beginning to understand, the little prince said. There's a flower. I think she's tamed me. Possibly, the fox said. On earth, one sees all kinds of things. Oh, this isn't on earth, the little prince said. The fox seemed quite intrigued. On another planet? Yes. Are there hunters on that planet? No. Now that's interesting. And chickens? No. Nothing's perfect, sighed the fox. But he returned to his idea. My life is monotonous. I hunt chickens, people hunt me, all chickens are just alike, and all men are just alike. I'm going to pause, show you the pictures. So there's our cute little prince, and the cute little fox. And then there is the hunter. And now we're back to it. All chickens are just alike, and all men are just alike. So I'm rather bored. But if you tame me, my life will be filled with sunshine. I'll know the sound of footsteps that will be different from all the rest. Other footsteps send me back underground. Yours will call me out of my burrow like music. And then, look! You see that wheat over, those wheat fields over there? I don't eat bread. For me, wheat is of no use whatsoever. Wheat fields say nothing to me which is sad, but you, you have the hair the color of gold. So it will be wonderful once you've tamed me. The wheat, which is golden, will remind me of you. And I'll love the sound of the wind and the wheat. The fox fell silent and stared at the little prince for a long while. Please, tame me, he said. I'd like to, the little prince replied, but I haven't much time. I have friends to find and so many things to learn. 
The only things you learn are the things you tame, said the fox. People haven't had time to learn anything. They buy things ready-made in stores. But since there are no stores where you can buy friends, people no longer have friends. If you want a friend, tame me. What do I have to do? asked the little prince. You have to be very patient, the fox answered. First, you'll sit down a little ways away from me, over there in the grass. I'll watch you out of the corner of my eye and you won't say anything. Language is a source of misunderstandings, but day by day, you'll be able to sit a little closer the next day, the prince returned. The little prince returned. It would have been better to return at the same time, the fox said. For instance, if you come at four in the afternoon, I'll begin to be happy by three. The closer it gets to four, the happier I'll feel. By four, I'll be all excited and worried. I'll discover what it costs to be happy. But if you come at any old time, I'll never know when I should prepare my heart. There must be rats. What's a right? Asked the little prince. That's another thing that's been too often neglected, the fox said. It's the fact that one day is different from the other days. One hour from the other hours. My hunters, for example, have a rat. They dance with the village girls on Thursdays. So, Thursday's a wonderful day. I can take a stroll all the way to the vineyards. If the hunters danced whenever they chose, the days would all just be alike, and I'd have no holiday at all. That was how the little prince tamed the fox. And when the time to leave was near, ah, the fox said, I shall weep. It's your own fault, the little prince said. I never wanted to do you any harm, but you insisted that I tame you. Yes, of course, the fox said. But you're going to weep, said the little prince. Yes, of course, the fox said. Then you get nothing out of it? I get something, the fox said, because of the color of the wheat. Then he added, go, go look at the, the roses again. You'll understand that yours is the only rose in all the world. Then come back to say goodbye, and I'll make you the gift of a secret. Pops? He's so cute. His long face and his long ears. The little prince went to look at the roses again. You're not at all like my rose. You're nothing at all yet, he told them. No one has tamed you and you haven't tamed anyone. You're the way my fox was. He was just a fox like a hundred thousand others, but I made him my friend and now he's the only fox in all the world. And the roses were humbled. You're lovely, but you're empty, he went on. One couldn't die for you. Of course, an ordinary passerby would think my rose looked just like you, but my rose, all on her own, is more important than all of you together since she's the one I've watered, since she's the one I put under the glass, since she's the one I sheltered behind a screen, since she's the one for whom I killed the caterpillars, except the two or three for butterflies, since she's the one I listened to when she complained or when she boasted, or even sometimes when she said nothing at all, since she's my rose. And he went back to the fox. Goodbye, he said. Goodbye.
fly, said the fox. Here is my secret. It's quite simple. One sees clearly only with the heart. Anything essential is invisible to the eye. Anything essential is invisible to the eyes, the little prince replied, repeated in order to remember. It's the time you spent on your rose that makes your rose so important. It's the time I spent on my rose, the little prince repeated in order to remember. People have forgotten this truth, the fox said, but you mustn't forget it. You become responsible forever for what you've tamed. You're responsible for your rose. I'm responsible for my rose, the little prince repeated in order to remember. Chapter 22. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the rail race railway switchman. What is it that you do here? asked the little prince. I sort the travelers into bundles of a thousand, the switchman said. I dispatch the trains that carry them, sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left. And a brightly lit express train, roaring like thunder, shook the switchman's cabin. What a hurry they're in said the little prince. What are they looking for? Not even the engineer of the locomotive knows, the switchman said. And another brightly lit express train thundered by in the opposite direction. Are they coming back already? asked the little prince. It's not the same ones, the switchman said. It's an exchange. They weren't Satisfied where they were? asked the little prince. No one is ever satisfied where he is, the switchman said. And a third, brightly lit express train thundered past. Are they chasing the first travelers? asked the little prince. They're not chasing anything, the switchman said. They're sleeping in there or else they're yawning. Only the children are pressing their noses against the window panes. Only the children know what they're looking for, said the little prince. They spend their time on a rag doll and it becomes very important. And if it's taken away from them, they cry. They're lucky, the switchman said. Last chapter. 20, chapter 23. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the sales clerk. This was a sales clerk who sold pills invented to quench thirst. Swallow one a week and you no longer feel any need to drink. Why do you sell these pills? They save so much time, the sales clerk said. Experts have calculated that you can save 53 minutes a week. And what do you do with those 53 minutes? Whatever you like. If I had 53 minutes to spend as I liked, the little prince said to himself, I'd walk very slowly toward a water fountain. And that is where we're going to pause for our first section of Le Petit Prince by Anton Zupéry. This Anton Zupéry. Really, give it a try. Try saying some things in a little frishy accent and enjoy it. All right, kiddos. I will see you later this week. To finish up this book, I hope that you are enjoying it. We're getting close to the end. Um, get your Kleenexes ready because if that lasts a little bit about the fox didn't make you cry, I promise 
You're going to need some Kleenex. All right, kiddos. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people that you're with. Um, yeah, be good. I'll see you in a few. Bye.